Cephalopods such as octopuses, cuttlefish, and squids are fascinating creatures, capable of completing complex tasks and even able to form mind-boggling camouflage. This camouflage has been a topic of interest since their discovery, and we are now forming conclusions of how these creatures form such beautiful shapes and colors. Cephalopod chromatophores, the cells that hold pigment to give animals color, aren't the same as any other animal. The chromatophores are neuromuscular organs, with a cytoelastic sacculus that holds the cephalopod's pigment. Surrounding each sacculus is a sophisticated, obliquely striated radial muscle, with a nerve attached directly to it. What does the muscle do? This muscle stretches to show color and attracts to hide color. Not all the chromatophores are the same color, however. This allows the cephalopod to adapt to many different terrains and scenarios. For open water camouflage, cephalopods have reflecting cells, iridophores, and leucophores. Since you can't become the color of clear water and the open ocean, cephalopods have these cells to reflect the light going through their iridescent bodies. Able to promote their clarity, and more likely be looked past by predators. To create the texture of their skin to match their background, cephalopods have something called papillae. The papillae are muscular hydrostats, or freely controlled muscle with no bones, but a dense white tip to help protrude out and to add texture. This muscle is what allows cephalopods to look almost unrecognizable when next to rocks or coral. How do they control this though? Studies have found that cephalopods can actually cognitively control their coloration, as well as have it perform naturally. This is much like how humans breathe, where you can control it, as well as have it perform naturally by itself. Each chromatophore is connected to a nerve, allowing the cephalopod camouflage to act quickly and under their complete control. The optical lobe of their brain is the instructor of their body's coloration, where it sends signals to the chromatophore and motoneuron lobes of the brain to execute the orders. The complexity of these creatures is truly staggering. These creatures have been able to survive millions of years with short lifespans evolving high-level problem-solving skills, high flexibility, and a body that allows it to form nearly perfectly with its surroundings. We are only beginning to discover what life has in store for us, and I can't wait to see what else, possibly you, could discover.